Hello, welcome to Fix's Base Time. In today's video, we have an interview with Herb Baker, a former manager at the Operations Support Office at NASA's Johnson Space Centre. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Thank you so, so much um, for coming on here for an interview. Can you tell everyone a bit about yourself? Uh, yes, so I worked for NASA, uh, mostly here in Houston at the Johnson Space Center for 42 years and uh, retired about five years ago. But uh, uh, I, I actually grew up with the, the space program, uh, living just a few miles from where they built the what was then the Manned Spacecraft Center. It's now the Johnson Space Center. And so, so I literally, I was 12 years old when it opened. So I literally was in the community when they moved in with the original seven astronauts and the, and the second class of astronauts. So I went to, to middle school with and, and high school and college with the kids that were my age of all of the, you know, the first astronauts, uh, Grissom, Cooper, Carpenter, Shira. And so anyway, so I, uh, I again grew up with the space program and had worked there for 42 years. And so, so when I retired, I, I couldn't just leave it all behind. So so I, I joined the NASA Alumni League, which of course uh, is a group of, of former former NASA employees, and, and so now I'm on the board of directors for the NASA Alumni League, and and uh, uh, also do I do a lot of volunteering for uh, organizations that support uh, STEM uh, education, and. Um, uh, yeah, that's so, uh, and, and, and I'm actually a, a community theater actor too, so that takes up a little bit of my time. Uh, and, and so I, I, I'm staying much busier than I ever dreamed I would after I retired. But I'm, I'm and, and, and of course, like this, I, and I really appreciate the offer. I, I love doing uh, speeches and presentations, and I just recently did an Instagram live video, uh, you know, getting to talk about. Uh, NASA and, and all of the cool things I got to do. All right, okay, wow. Um, how did you get interested in space and space flight? Is it because of where you, um, where you lived and it was all quite close to you? Uh, yes, I, I, I think that had to have been part of it, right? Uh, again, I mean, like I said, uh, I, I was, while I was a teenager, I was, you know, living amongst all of the, the uh, not not just the astronaut families, of course, uh, uh, but but all of the most of my friends in junior high, middle school, and high school, uh, even if they they weren't the the children of astronauts, their their mother or father did some kind of work uh, supporting NASA. The the uh, the interesting thing though that you, you might find interesting, and I, I didn't mention it earlier, is that I was not a uh, a scientist or, or an engineer, I, I went to a, a school, a college, and, and was a business major. And so the, the, the funny thing about that is, uh, you know, even, even having grown up in this community, I thought that to work for NASA, you had to be a, an astronaut or a scientist or an engineer or a doctor. But it turned out, and I won't go into the whole long story, but when I was about to graduate from uh, college, uh, University of Texas in Austin, uh, I uh, took a civil service test. That's the way you got a job with the government back in the 70s, was you took a test. I called it a civil service exam. And, and even when I did that, I, I had no idea I, I would end up at NASA. It's just that I scored highly enough that when the scores went out uh, after taking the test uh, to the, the government agencies, uh, I was, I guess, near the top of the list. So, so NASA called me and said, hey, would you like to come interview for a job in our, our business office? And of course, I said, oh my gosh, yes, wow, what a, that's, uh, that, would be, that would be wonderful. And, and even then, little did I know that I would you know, enjoy 42 years there. Uh, and my mother even uh, played a role in, in the space program back in 1973 when Skylab launched, uh, there was a problem in the, the heat micrometeoroid heat shield was ripped off and the, the two solar arrays didn't deploy. Anyway, there was a major problems with, with Skylab. And, and so the, the fix for the uh, missing heat shield was to send up a, a piece of special lightweight fabric that was uh, like, a, like an umbrella. They called it a parasol, in fact. It was uh, this special material that my mother sewed 
uh, she was the one sitting at the sewing machine. There's, a, there's an official NASA photo of, of her. Uh, and, and so it was deployed uh, through an, a scientific airlock. It was 22 feet by 24 feet. It was folded up, pushed up through the airlock, unfurled and pulled down, and, and it worked. Uh, so anyway, again, you know, I've always been very proud of my mother uh, for being uh, part of the, the group that, that saved uh, Skylab. So, so anyway, that's a long answer to your story. But yeah, the, I, you know, having grown up when and where I did in the family that I did, there's, there's no way I think I could have avoided having a, a life in the, the space program. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, could you go a bit into... Um into more depth about um, depth about what you did at NASA. Oh yes, yeah. so again, I worked in in the business uh, procurement office, and so so I bought things. Uh, mainly, what I did, uh, my office, uh, we uh, solicited proposals from aerospace companies and and negotiated and awarded the contracts. Most of them were you know billion dollar contracts. Uh, one of the first contracts I, I worked on was buying the space shuttle orbiter vehicles. And you know, that cost about $2 billion each. Uh, and, and so, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, again, doing contract management, contract administration with companies like Boeing and Lockheed and, and SpaceX, I got to be involved in, in the first, uh, it wasn't a contract with SpaceX, it was a Space Act agreement. Uh, I was involved in that uh, starting back in 2006, uh, the, uh, uh, commercial orbital transportation services program where we uh, offered to provide funding to any uh, U.S. company out there who was interested in, in developing their own space vehicles. And so SpaceX was one of the ones we chose. And I, I, I still have the, the cover page of the agreement that Elon Musk signed uh, back in, in 2006. And so I uh, got to do, uh, even though it was uh, in, in the business office, I was supporting the space shuttle program. I mentioned buying the shuttle orbiter vehicles and the space station program and the, even the Orion program. Uh, but the last 10 years or so, uh, my office, I was the manager of an office of about 25, 30 people. And we uh, provided support to a mission or flight operation. For a while it was mission operations. It was changed to, to flight operations. And so we supported the astronaut office and astronaut training. Uh, mission control operations and uh, aircraft operations. And uh, so, even, so even though I wasn't a, a scientist or engineer and astronaut, I got to work with them every day. So that was, that was uh, really, really challenging and enjoying and, uh, and fun. Okay, sounds like um, quite an interesting job. Um, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis when working at NASA? <laughs> Uh, well, so so for one thing, the, the first thing that come to, comes to mind is I, I always felt lucky that I was one of those few people, I think, who looked forward to going to work every day. You know, what, a, what an amazing, wonderful, challenging, exciting place to work. You know, I, I still remember when I would uh, be at, at the Johnson Space Center and I'd need to walk from one building to another for a meeting or, or, or whatever reason. And uh, Space Center Houston is, is right next door. It's the official visitor center for Johnson Space Center. And they send, you, you can't get on site at the Johnson Space Center unless you have a badge, except through the Space Center Houston. And so they, they send trams, uh, you know, uh, around to, to, to get to view certain areas. And so, you know, I would see, a, I would be outside walking to another building and I'd see one of those trams go by with, with people, you know, looking around and taking photos. And I'm thinking, wow, those people paid money just to get to look at the place that they're pay, paying me to come work. So, so I, I you know, it, it uh, I, I never, you know, I never forgot how lucky I felt to, to get to work there, but it, it's hard to describe a typical day because it, it especially since I, I moved around so a lot, I worked at Johnson Space Center and in NASA headquarters and then back to Johnson Space Center and then to the Kennedy Space Center and then back to NASA headquarters and then back to Johnson Space Center. And I worked in the shuttle program, the space station program, the Orion program, you know, flight operations. I was, seemed like I was always moving around. And, um, but but I, I guess 
just to say, even to the last day of those 42 years, it never got boring or old. It was exciting and challenging uh, up to the very last day. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think I could have asked for anything more out of a, out of a career. Wow. Um, what, was NASA a good work environment? Yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's really, you know, pretty much other than when I was, a, you know, growing up as a teenager working at a, a gas station, uh, it was it's the only job I had. And so uh, obviously I had, you know, family and friends and acquaintances that worked other places and I would hear stories, but I, you know, don't have any personal experience at any other job than this. And it was a, it was a wonderful place to work. Uh, you know, it's it really interesting. I started there in, in 1975 and uh, it was not uh, a good place for women. I mean, you know, in the sense that we didn't even have women astronauts until 1978, which was, you know, three years after I had started there. And, and when I was working there in the seventies, uh, most of the, the women who worked there were secretaries and, and boy, that changed a lot over those 42 years, all for the good. Uh, you know, in fact, when I, when I left my, you know, the, the organization that I worked in of about 130 people, 60% of them were women. And, and so th that's just one example of the, the, you know, what they called diversity and inclusion. NASA took absolutely, uh, 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 you know, a, a point of view that we need to have as, as a diverse workforce as possible, be inclusive, have as many different opinions and thoughts and, and you know, uh, outlooks as, as we can. And so they, the NASA was very strategic about trying to include, and, and, and not just gender women, but, you know, uh, people of other nationality, well, you had to be a U.S. citizen, but, but uh, uh, you know, uh, diff people from all of kind, different kinds of backgrounds, and, uh, and they were serious about it. And, uh, you know, I, I can't say that about every working environment today. And, 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 I, and I do remember one example, uh, I had a, a good friend who worked for me at NASA and decided to leave. They thought it would be, you know, for another job and they thought it would be better in somehow, in some way. And sure enough, after, uh, uh, you know, just a year or two, they realized this other place that they worked people were, you know, it wasn't nearly as, as good a work environment as NASA and it was much more competitive rather than, than people being concerned about, you know, accomplishing the mission. They were just trying to look out for themselves and, you know, stabbing each other in the back, so to speak, and, and you know, trying to, to, to uh, take credit for things that they didn't do and, and just not, not the, the exact opposite of what it was like at NASA. And so, I helped this person get their job back at NASA and, and we're still friends today. But the, anyway, that's a long way to say, yes, I, uh, I, I personally, I think, I can't think of anywhere better to work, a better work environment than, than somewhere like NASA where so many smart, uh, dedicated people are all working for the same goal and will bend over backwards to help you if you need uh, any, any help along the way. Right, good. Um, when do you think um, humans will get to Mars? <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's an interesting question, and and you know you might get a different answer from uh, every everyone you ask. And, and and I, you know, again, having been retired for almost five years, I certainly don't have any inside information. I I know that that's the plan, uh, and they're working on things. Uh, but but boy, there are. A lot of lot of technological issues still to be solved. Uh, I mean, even things like radiation uh, that the astronauts would experience. It's one thing to spend, you know, two or three days flying to the moon. It's another to spend six months uh, or however long it takes to get to, to Mars. And that's, that brings up another thing. You know, what kind of vehicle would we take uh, to Mars? And and I really think it would be good to come up with a different kind of propulsion that we have now, than different than we have now to get there more quickly. And, and so, 
you know, the vehicle, the, the method of propulsion, the solving things like um, the radiation and even food and water. I mean, even if it is, if it's just a, a six month trip, it, you can't pack all of the food and, and water you need in that whatever, probably, unless, unless it's a much, turns out being a much bigger vehicle than I'm envisioning. Anyway, uh, so many different things to, to solve. Uh, I, you know, if you ask me personally, my guess would be, I, I, I'm guessing it'd probably still be another 20 years. Uh, I, I'm, I mean, again, I, factoring in things like I, I mentioned earlier, work being involved in the, the uh, work with the SpaceX in, in the early days of, of the first uh, agreement with them to to develop the the you know the dragon and uh you know their their commercial vehicle that was 2006 that was 15 years ago and i mean they have in the last couple of years of course flown some uh, safe uh missions uh crewed missions to the space station and, and lots of of uh, cargo missions but still you know that's 15 years just to get to low earth, uh, low earth orbit. So to get to Mars with all of those problems we have to solve, I wouldn't surprise me at all if it takes another 20 years. All right, okay. Um, what's your opinion on um, what Elon Musk and SpaceX are doing with commercial spaceflight and um, with their Starship vehicle, vehicle going to Mars? It, yeah, so I, I'm uh, just, you know, follow that in the news like, like uh, most other people, I, I, I again, I, I've, I've been a, a, a supporter of, of SpaceX since the very beginning, and I, I, I do uh, enjoy seeing not only them but but Boeing and and Sierra Nevada and and, and lots of other uh, commercial companies getting involved in space. Blue, you know, Blue Origin sending even if it's just to, you know, up to fifty five miles, uh, getting people up. And high enough to see the the Earth, uh, uh, you know the curvature of the Earth. I I am all for all of the, the commercial space, uh, not just SpaceX and Elon Musk, but all of the the uh, commercial space uh, activities to, to to get as as many people safely, uh, because it's it's still you know well I think we've been lucky. Uh, I haven't had any accidents with any crew on board, but. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I think that's a, that it's, it's only good. The more people that, that get to see uh, the earth from space, I think the, the more people will appreciate this beautiful blue marble that we live on and, and how that, that little thin atmosphere is the only thing that's protecting all of us here on earth from, the, from death in, in the vacuum of, uh, of space. So uh, yeah, I, I uh, uh, absolutely hope they're successful with everything that that they're doing all right okay um good um what do you think of their starship vehicle and them trying to get to mars um yeah i you know that's uh i i, I don't know all of the details about the uh, starship i i think i think you're right as, as i understand it that's at least for, for Elon Musk and SpaceX, that's what they're envisioning going to Mars in. And, you know, cause I was, I was talking about a different vehicle, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of what NASA might develop, but hey, uh, you know, uh, if, if, that, if that works, uh, I mean, that, that is a, a, a huge vehicle. Uh, but again, I, I'm not sure what uh, just, you know, what propulsion, uh, he has in mind other than what he's using today. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that cuts any time off of the six months or, or however long it, it takes. You know, people ask, how long does it take to, to get to Mars? And the answer is, it, well, it depends. It depends on where you are in the, you know, in the orbit of the, the planets. But, uh, you know, I think roughly six months is about uh, a standard kind of time. But, uh, uh yeah, you know, it's, it's certainly an interesting, uh, Starship is certainly an interesting vehicle. And like I said, I, I hope whatever they decide to do with it, they're successful. All right, okay. Um, what's your plans for the future? 
Well, well I just hope uh, to get to continue doing what I'm doing. Uh, you know, as I mentioned maybe before, when I retired, I, I really uh, had no idea that I would uh, uh, be as involved in the NASA Alumni League as I am, as I am, and I and I really enjoy that. The 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 president of my chat of our chapter that I that I get to you know work with every month in our our board meeting is is Bill MacArthur, an astronaut who was a, a, a commander of the ISS, uh, uh, you know, Expedition Twelve. I I think, and I have you know, other astronauts and flight directors in the NASA Alumni League. So, so being part of that group is is interesting and exciting. And and you know, we have social events and and getting to do things like this. Uh, again, I, I just got invited to to be a speaker uh, at a an in, international international space convention uh, that's being hosted in in. Uh, uh, Georgia, not the, not the state Georgia, the country Georgia in Eastern Europe, you know, with the supposedly we'll have thousands of, of, of attendees, most of them virtually, but, uh, and I, I just, uh, you know, love doing this, getting to talk about uh, not, not just my career, although I do like to talk about that, but, but just NASA and space industry in general. And, and so I really appreciate the opportunities uh, that like, like your invitation here to get to, to talk about those things and, and spread the word. And, uh, and so I hope to get to continue to do that, you know, get in invitations to be a presenter, a speaker uh, on, on YouTube videos and, uh, um, and, and also, uh, especially, once it gets a little more safe out there, uh, actually go and, and do more in-person volunteering. Uh, I, I volunteered uh, a fair amount for the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation and uh, a Space Center Houston, uh, which, which was really lots of fun. Uh, but, but since the you know, COVID pandemic hit, I haven't really been over there amongst the large crowds of, of people. Uh, I hope to get to, to start to doing that again soon. But uh, uh, so so I'm staying much more busy and involved in uh, the space uh, space world than I ever expected when I retired. But I'm I'm really really enjoying it. Hope to get to the, continue to do that. Good good. Um, thank you so so much um, for coming on here for an interview. That's all the questions I've got for you. You had some brilliant answers to my questions, and I wish you all the luck with everything that you're going to do. Well, good. Uh, thanks again for inviting me and, and good luck with your uh, YouTube channel. I, I checked out a few of the videos. You've had some great guests. <laughs> so uh, uh, again, good luck with that. And, and thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Um, have a great rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.